Hello, All Saints. I hope all of you are having a good week. I want to talk with you about three things today. The first is Pentecost. The second is some upcoming events. We've got lots of good things happening. And then thirdly, I want to take a few minutes to talk about formation in Christ. So this Sunday is Pentecost. Uh, what a wonderful day to celebrate on the calendar. Um, we're going to look at the biblical background of Pentecost, looking in the Old Testament. It's an Old Testament feast. And then we're going to look at uh, Acts 2, where the event of Pentecost happens for the early church. And the church becomes Pentecostal people at that moment, people of Pentecost. And then we're going to look at the implications of Pentecost, um, what it means for us today. It's going to be good. And on the note of Pentecost, just wanted to share uh, last weekend, the elders and wives went on a retreat and we had an agenda worked out. Philippe had planned this amazing retreat for us to go and be together. And we had a little Holy Spirit interruption. We ended up having a little taste of Pentecost with elders and wives. It was awesome. Um, circling up, praying for one another, waiting on the Lord, worshiping had people actually uh, getting the gift of tongues for the first time and uh, speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues and having visions for one another. It was awesome. So Pentecost is important for us. Um, a second thing, things that are happening. No easier way to do this than to click through it. You can always see it online at ASCC.org. But uh, we have Steve Nicholson coming in September uh, September 6th through the 8th. Why am I saying it so early? So that you can mark your calendars and make sure to be here for that. What a gift Steve is to our church. He's been connected with us for several years now. He's a coach, a mentor, and each time he visits, uh, he brings something special. And this time in September, we're going to be talking about what it means to be and and grow and develop as a sending and multiplying church. So he's going to talk to us about that and uh, developing leaders and how to multiply uh, thoughtfully and plant churches. So it's going to be a good time. Lots of youth things happening, summer youth events, crazy summer nights, June 2nd through the 5th. So let's be praying for our youth um, and for ourselves because it's crazy for the whole church. Um, youth camp is July 17th through the 21st. And we've also decided to add a baptism Sunday, June 30th. So if you're interested in getting baptized, you can look into that online. Okay, a third thing. I want to take a minute and talk about this. Um, we are a community of worship and formation on mission with Jesus. Uh, we are wanting to be you know, driven by the Lord and vision and mission that he gives us. And an important part of that fourfold mission is formation. We talk about it, but we're going to be talking about it more and more in the coming days. Um, what is formation? It really is when we put our faith in Christ, we're born again, we're baptized into the church, into Christian community, and then we begin a lifelong journey of growing and maturing in the Lord Jesus and having the character of Christ formed in us, as Paul says in Galatians 4.19. So that's where we get that word we're formed in Christ and Christ is formed in us. We increasingly become more and more like him. So I want to talk about this for a minute in Protestant terms. And we're a Protestant church born out of the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century. We talk about formation in terms of we're saved by grace through faith. And then we're sanctified. We're made holy by the renewing work of the Holy Spirit in us. And some of us are familiar with those Protestant terms. I want to talk briefly today about the terms that the early church fathers and the ancient church and even the contemporary Orthodox Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, the Church of the East, they talk about it in these terms. They say that when we put our faith in Christ, we begin a lifelong journey of something called theosis, T-H-E-O-S-I-S. And that basically means that God is transforming us into the image of Christ through the presence and work of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Protestant view and the Orthodox view, the ancient view, 
are similar in some ways. It's kind of different language for the same reality, the same dynamic. And there are some differences, but I just want to familiarize us with this a little bit. So for the early church fathers talking about theosis, they're basically looking at the beginning of the story, the biblical story in Genesis 1, 26, 27. Man and woman are created in the image of God. And then we fall in, in sin, and every person is a sinner in need of redemption. But in Christ, we're united with God through Christ, and God begins to restore his image and his likeness in us. And so the early church fathers would argue that's what the whole biblical story is about. God restoring his image and likeness in human beings through the life and death and resurrection of Christ and the impact that that has on the human race, on human history, and all of creation for that matter. One um, uh, early church father named Maximus the Confessor, 7th century. Again, I like to mention some of these folks because they're our relatives. They're our cousins. Um, Maximus the Confessor says this when he's speaking about theosis, the process of being made like Christ. He says, it is clear that Christ who became man without sin, as we're seeing in Hebrews 4.15, will divinize, deify, transform human nature without changing it into divine nature. So when the early church fathers like Maximus and others talk about deification or divinization, they're saying basically what Jesus said in Matthew 548, become more like the Father. God is making us more like himself, but we always remain creatures and God always remains God. Do you see that? So the Mormons and some of the folks that take some of these ancient ideas and, and tweak them and adjust them and distort them, frankly, are missing it. God always remains God, but through Christ, through Christ becoming man, becoming human, he joins us. When we put our faith in him, he joins us to God. And so I'm going to explain a few verses here so we, we're clear on this. I've had quite a few people talking about this. And uh, Ted Kim at the Evanston Vineyard actually asked me to come last fall and speak about this topic. So that's why I'm addressing it with you. So Christ and the apostles speak in these terms of theosis. Jesus, as I mentioned, already says in Matthew 548, become like your heavenly father. Be perfect like he is. Reflect the excellencies of his perfection. Jesus was a realist, so he wasn't saying that from the beginning you become perfect and you'll be just like God. No, he's laying out your life of discipleship means that you're growing. You're becoming more and more like your father. So Christ says this. Christ says some stunning things. In John 14, 23, Christ says this. He says, those who love me will keep my word. And my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. So Jesus is saying that the Father, the Son, and he says in uh, chapter 15 and 16 that the Spirit. So the Holy Trinity comes to reside in us, and that transforms us over a lifetime. So Jesus talks about this. These are just little uh, tokens of this. The Apostle Paul. Listen to what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Some of you are familiar with this as Paul is talking about the new covenant, and the old covenant, the glory of the new covenant. Listen to what Paul says. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. And so theosis, being transformed into the image of God in Christ, having the image and likeness of God restored in us. Paul talks about it. He mentions it in Romans eight twenty nine as well. He says that we're conformed to the image of Christ 
so that we might be part of God's family of Christ-like sons and daughters. Lastly, let me show you that, share this last verse with you. It's 2 Peter 1.4, and the Apostle Peter says that through the magnificent promises of Scripture, that human beings in Christ become partakers of the divine nature. What? That is what the early church fathers saw as they poured over the scriptures, as they saw the implications of what Christ, the word of God, becoming, becoming human, restoring us, the implications of that. We become partakers, participants in the very divine nature. Friends, this is, this is massive. And we've already seen here, there's distortions. You can find them all over the place. But the early church fathers, the ancient church, did all they could to preserve this doctrine, the lofty, high calling of people in Christ for their entire lives to live a life of repentance, turning from sin, turning to God, and through the work of the Holy Spirit, becoming increasingly Christ-like. So when we talk about formation, these are just a few aspects of that. Friends, it is, it's glorious what we're called to. We are called to be saved, to be born again, to be sanctified. But sometimes by looking at the history of the church, the history of Christian theology, it helps flesh that out for us a little bit. It takes us into new places in scripture, in the word of God, in our own faith. So the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, all saints, as you are transformed into the image of and likeness of Christ. I know I went a little bit longer today, but I want us to look at some of these aspects of our mission. Be blessed.